the only way that pride could be too much of a party is if it forgets its roots, if it is oblivious to the continuing struggle now. 48 years ago, something happened that was a watershed moment in the LGBT community. On June 28th, 1969, police descended upon a gay club in downtown Manhattan called the Stonewall Inn. Some of you folks are nodding your head. It wasn't the first time they'd raided this club or others like it. Homosexual behavior, cross-dressing, other expressions of gender nonconformity were treated as crimes, and every raid yielded a bumper crop of so-called criminals. But on June 28, 1969, things were different. The police raided the club, and the club patrons fought back. That this fierceness had never happened before. The ensuing riots lasted days, and it was a spark. Soon afterwards, gay rights organizations all across the country were springing up. And a year later, in remembrance of Stonewall, we saw the very first pride marches across the land. Pride comes from fierceness. The pride event held in New York was called the Christopher Street Liberation Day March. And one first person account of the event describes it as somber. There were no floats, no music, no boys in briefs. <laughs> Marchers held signs and banners and they chanted, say it clear, say it loud, gay is good, gay is proud. Say it clear, say it loud, gay is good, gay is proud. Well, that was taking place in New York City. Here in Atlanta, activists were handing out literature in Piedmont Park. No march was held. That would take place the following year in 1971, and it was organized by GGLF, the Georgia Gay Liberation Front. Who knows about that group, GGLF? Tell me, okay. Pride had come to Atlanta, and here we are, 46 years later. And what does that mean, 46 years later? It is true, over 46 years, there's been lots of advances in civil rights for LGB, LGBT people. Many would say that the legalization of same-sex marriages in 2015 was yet another watershed moment. But then came the mass shooting at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. June 12, 2016, 49 people died. The one-year anniversary of that it's weighing heavily on our hearts right now. That's not that long ago. And now in 2017, we have seen one outrageous offense to civil rights after another. On July 26, 2017, Lieutenant Commander Blake Draman, a Navy Supply Corps officer who is transgender, he turned on CNN only to discover that his job was in danger. That morning, President Trump had tweeted his executive order banning all transgender people from serving in the military. And then on August 29th, 2017, headlines were screaming about the Nashville Statement. Y'all know about the Nashville Statement? 150 conservative evangelical Christian leaders, they came together. They called themselves the Council on Biblical Manhood and Womanhood. And they issued a statement explicitly condemning all forms of sexual and gender nonconformity. Only heterosexuality is permitted. Whatever body you are born in that defines your heart and your spirit biology is your prison. And then, on October 5th, 2017, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, he ordered the Justice Department to take the position in court cases that transgender people are not protected by civil rights laws that ban workplace discrimination based on sex. Stonewall happened 48 years ago, but we must not ever forget the fierceness that pervaded that. When things like the pulse shooting happen, when, things like, when there's legalized discrimination against people who are transgender, when Nashville statements are issued and beautiful people think God hates them or they are worthy of hate, when things like this happen, we just gotta get fierce. Don't you, don't you agree with me? Come on, we gotta get fierce. You gotta bring that fierce as pride. Pride is playful and pride is fierce. 